Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another pen review. You notice I didn't say fountain pen? That's because this is a ballpoint pen. Not just any ballpoint pen, it's a Lamy Safari ballpoint pen. But not just a Lamy Safari ballpoint pen, it's a Lamy Safari ballpoint pen Neo Smart Pen. What's the matter, Pop? I'm confused. Now that you're thoroughly confused, it's a good time to hit like and subscribe. And did you also know that you can join my channel as a member for just $1 or $5 a month? Membership not only guarantees I'll answer your comments, it also supports my channel and allows me to say what I want about those pants you love to hate. Where did you get that dress? It's awful and those shoes and that coat, jeez. If I hate a pen that you happen to love, well, sucks to be you. But this whole place sucks. That's right, it sucks. My opinion cannot be bought. But send me a private message and we'll talk. The United States government will not be blackmailed. However, I see no difficulty in meeting your timetable. I teased all of you in my I'm back video with a fake phone call from a company wanting to give me a smart pen. Well, that call might have been fake. It was actually Cousin It on the other end of the phone. But the fake pen isn't smart. What's a smart pen? I mean, the smart pen isn't fake. I think I got everything backwards. Could be I got dressed in a hurry this morning. Great beasties, what's happened to his head? It's on backwards. Why didn't somebody tell me my ass was so big? I was indeed contacted by a smart pen company to review a new product which launched on September 1st. And here it is. It's the Lamy Safari Neo Smart Pen. Neo Smart Pen is a company based in Seoul, South Korea that has more than 10 years of experience in smart pen technology. They have a number of smart pens on the market that translate handwriting and drawing to digital text and art, including the Dymo, the N2, M1, and the M1 Plus. On September 1st, they announced a new partnership with Lamy Germany and released this Lamy Safari Neo Smart Pen. I got one of the very first. And yes, it is a ballpoint pen. It's difficult enough to drag the 20th century into the 21st without having to bring along the baggage from the 19th century as well. If there's ever going to be any progress... And there's got... some lovely filth down here! Oh! So, if you're a fountain pen purist, you'll have to make do with writing your notes with a fountain pen on paper and then faxing the page to your grandfather in Poughkeepsie. I'm cold and there are wolves after me. Keep in mind, though, it's a fallacy that the page actually goes through the phone lines. It doesn't. That's just stupid. Everyone knows it's the ink that goes through the phone lines. So stupid. But anyway, if you're up to speed with the 21st century and know the difference between a tweet and a meme and Tinder from Grindr. I am eight years old and we're learning. Wow, look at all these guys that want to be my friends. Then follow me as we see how the ancient art of putting pen to paper can be transformed into brand new methods of human communication and expression right now. But I just got back from Ontario um, late yesterday and I found this in my mailbox. I'm going to open it because I think it's a smart pen. And here we are. The Lamy Neolab Convergence back it says designed by Lamy in Germany Lamy Safari all black end code model NWP F80 made in Korea and see what's inside yep. 
Okay, so it's like a, a stationary box. It's very reminiscent of Lamy packaging with the shiny embossed Lamy. Let's see what we have. We have the Lamy Safari Smart Pen, a USB cable, and a Lamy Neolab digital paper journal. And the notebook, dot grid, end code for digitized writing. We'll talk about that when I use this for a bit. 192 pages. The contents. Well, there's our USB cable for charging the pen and transferring data. And we have some documentation here. Experience the Lamy Safari all black encode. File share, media share, search, bookmarking. The quick start guide with the different parts, how to charge it, and to download the software. There's a Q code there and some codes for colors. So this is documentation how to re how to replace the, the tip. So this is documentation that you'll want to read and keep with you. So let's pull the pen out. So I'm going to follow all the directions and open up this digital paper and work with this Lamy Smart Pen for a number of days and then I will attempt a review. So this is an unusual pen review, so I'm going to approach it a little differently. First, I'd like to introduce you to the Lamy Neo Smart Pen, its parts and its features, and compare it directly to a standard Lamy Safari fountain pen. Then I'll do a digital writing sample using the Smart Pen and my Apple iPhone. Finally, I'll sum up my thoughts about this pen and my experiences with it for the last week, as well as what my intended uses for it might be. First, let's look at the Lamy Neo Smart Pen. Let me clarify something right off the bat. This is a smart pen, not a stylus. This is a stylus. This is a stylus. And this is a stylus as well. And this is a stylus for my Wacom tablet. A stylus is a computer interface device like a mouse or a trackball. The Lamy Neo Smart Pen is a pen. It writes on paper, but it is smart in that it digitizes your on paper writing and doodling to your iOS or Android device. Now you can write on your phone or your tablet with a stylus, but you won't get that pen on paper experience and you won't get an immediate hard copy of your work. From the top, we see a different plastic finial than on the fountain pen. It is a very clever eight pointed compass like star. The fountain pen has the cross and the rollerball has a slot. So this symbol here differentiates the pen from those models and highlights the Bluetooth electronic nature of this pen. Then we have the ubiquitous Lamy Safari Clip, which is not only stylish, it is extremely functional, working with almost anything from jeans pockets to clipping onto a notebook. There's a small step down to the non-removable barrel, which tapers very, very slightly to the end finial, which houses the USB micro B connection for charging. The classic Lamy Safari flatted side cylinder barrel of the pen also has a multicolored LED, which turns green while charging or connected to the app, blue when the power is on, orange when the power is low, and red when there is an error. And the green light goes out when the pen is charged. On the back side of the barrel is a small power switch, which you hold for three seconds to turn the pen on, and three seconds to turn it off, which makes the LED flash multicolors as it shuts down. The pen can also be turned on by pressing the tip onto any surface. There's also the classic Lamy logo embossed into the barrel. 
The cap snaps off to reveal the classic Lamy Safari triangular grip. And instead of the fountain pen or a rollerball nib, we see a ballpoint nib housed in a plastic hood, which also houses the camera and sensor that reads the ENCODE microdots on the special paper. And this is where I will applaud the triangular grip, which I usually don't like at all on the fountain pen. Here it makes total sense, and it's very clear why Neo Smart Pen collaborated with Lamy to get this grip. It is perfect for the purpose because the sensor and the camera cannot read the ENCODE microdots unless the pen is oriented just this way, and the triangular grip keeps you writing properly for the application to record the pen strokes. The only serviceable part of the Lamy Neo Smart Pen is the replaceable ballpoint cartridge, which just pulls out. It is a Lamy M21 cartridge which comes in four colors, black, blue, green, and red, and is easily found online and in retail stores around the world. And it just slides right back in just like that. The barrel posts deeply and securely just like the standard Safari. But let's look at the standard Safari for a moment. At first glance, when capped, the two pens seem to be identical to each other other than the color and the ink window. But the Neo Smart Pen Safari is bigger in girth and in length, and not surprisingly, it is heavier as well. The extra size is obviously to house the electronics, but unless you had a standard Safari next to you, I doubt Safari lovers would notice the size difference at all. You'll certainly notice the weight difference, but it doesn't make the pen anywhere close to being considered heavy. It is still very comfortable in the hand, either posted or unposted. So let's look at some measurements and then we'll talk tech. Okay, now we've seen the physical pen and its features, but what is a smart pen and what are its uses? Well, simply put, a smart pen tracks what you write on paper and digitizes it on a smartphone or a tablet computer. This allows you to save your notes and drawings for electronic purposes like translating your handwriting and printing into digital text for pasting into a word processor or sending text or drawings via email and social media. The smart pen tracks your writing and your line drawing live for, for meetings with uh, say Zoom or demonstrations, lectures, uh, things like that for distance learning. The smart pen can record your writing and drawing as digital photos or digital video for editing later. You can record your voice while you are drawing to do a live online demonstration or presentation or save later for editing and posting. The possibilities are virtually endless for this kind of technology. Let's look at some examples of some of the smart pens capabilities. So let's do a sample with the iPhone app and the digital paper and the pen connected. So the first thing we have to do is connect the pen. And so we have our app running and we turn the pen on and it should recognize there it is a pen has been connected and we can select some things for our settings color and so forth and there are some advanced settings power settings battery saving mode you can set a password auto power off set to 10 minutes right now um, and this is where you look for updates um, and you can deregister the pen here as well. So we go back to the main menu here. We've got our pen connected and the LED on the pen turns green when that happens. You can also, if you turn off your pen, it turns multicolor when you turn off the pen and the pen disconnects, you can start the pen just by touching the uh, pen to the ENCODE uh, paper. 
just like that. And the pen is recognized and it looks to transfer the information right away, but we're gonna write with the pen. So I'm gonna pretend I'm uh, doing a, a lecture here uh, online. Uh, I can write with this offline as well. But we're going to study the inverse square law. So you might actually learn something today. So if I have uh, one candle, here's my poor drawing of a candle burning, and it's burning at uh, one candle power. And it's shining on a surface one foot away. That is one foot square, one foot by one foot. That's one foot candle. Didn't know that, did you? Yep, it is. So that intensity of the light falling on, so I equals foot can one foot candle. And what happens if I increase this distance to two feet? So in other words, I'm doubling the distance. Uh, most of my students always say, oh, well, you'll get one half a foot candle. And that would be incorrect because light travels outwards in three dimensions. And so it is a square of the distance because the law is the intensity equals the peak candela over the distance squared. So we take the peak candela one and we divide it by the distance squared and we end up with one quarter foot candle over two feet of distance given one candle power at the beginning. And that's our learning moment for today. Okay, then. Thank you, Mr. Know-it-all. Then I can turn off my pen. And it disconnects. And we're ready to work with our data. Now I'm just going to move back. And it shows it created a new page here. And it even numbered the page. This is page 190. I'm going to select my page. And then I touch the more three buttons and I choose transcribe and we'll see what a good job this does with transcribing my text if I wanted to copy that. All I do is touch it twice, select the text, copy it, and I can send it in an email to myself or send, paste it into a, uh, another application, a Word document, whatever and edit it. Now if I want to go back into that page, I just tap on the page and the app comes up with transfer all, but I don't want to transfer anything at this moment. I want to add some more data to this page. Let's see how well it transcribes my printing versus my writing. You know, I have to forgive my printing and writing here because I'm writing around a tripod. And this is a ballpoint. Now let's try it in writing. I know it doesn't like my T's. That's not a T for this application. I've already discovered that. So I'm going to make my T's like that. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And now I'm going to turn off my pen. And we'll go back and see if we can transcribe this page. We'll 
transcribe and see how well it does. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So the printing is good. The first letter there uh, that I wrote with my cursive was a T, and you can see that it transcribes it as an F. So I make a T like a printing T when I'm writing with this, and then the rest of my writing isn't too bad. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So it's pretty good. Just double tap that, select all the text, copy it, and then I can paste it somewhere. Now I can also use the share button here and I can send it to various people. I can copy it, I can save it to Dropbox, I can send it by email. Uh, there's all kinds of applications that you can, you can send this text to, to share. You can also add a hashtag. I can add a hashtag to this to be able to sort out my pages. So I can call this uh, Photometrics. There. Now when I want to search for my pages, once I've got hundreds of pages, anything that is hashtagged with Photometrics will bring up those pages. You can also bookmark your pages like that. And here endeth the lesson. Okay, so that was a brief and simple demonstration of using the Smart Pen. You don't actually need your iOS or Android device with you when you write in the encoded notebook. Just turn on your pen and write. Then when you're back with your device, open the app, turn on your pen, and it will prompt you to transfer your digitized drawing or writing uh, to the app where you can work with it. The pen has a memory that will store thousands of pages. Let's look at this paper for a moment. Now the camera doesn't pick up anything but just the dots, but maybe you can see the micro dots in there. They aren't like a grid, they're more like random dots. I don't know how the ENCODE technology works, but it's really cool. It seems to register the entire page and page number. And you can lock these pages as well uh, to overwrite them or to start a new notebook. And this little bookmark, which is included with the A5 size ENCODE journal, allows you to change colors and line thicknesses. Of course, this only affects the digitized lines on your device because your pen on the paper is still just ballpoint ink on the paper. The good news regarding the ENCODE paper is that these notebooks are roughly the same price as other A5 journals like the Leishtarm and the Rhodia, and the paper is nicely fountain pen friendly as well. As you can see, I put fountain pen ink right there and it's uh, not bleeding through at all. But there's further good news as well. Uh, which is that you can download PDF files of ENCODE pages that you can print with a laser printer to get your own free ENCODE pages. You can purchase ENCODE day planners, which will sync with your Google, Apple, or Microsoft calendars and planners. They all seem to be sold out at the moment, being almost the end of 2021. The Neo Studio application is now capable of syncing to your PC through the web address which I'll show below, where you can access your saved pages and notebooks. This Lamy Safari Neo Smart Pen doesn't seem to be compatible with the Neo Smart Really Nifty. Yeah, I said nifty. What are you, 12? Yeah. Piece of software called PaperTube, which is a terrific application for teachers to create lessons for live distance learning or pre recorded lectures for online learning. PaperTube is a video creation tool for those who have their own content to deliver in a casual lecture form. It captures your lecture material, scribblings, your face, and voice, plus other effects at once. No post editing is needed. Find PaperTube on App Store or Google Play Store to download. Hopefully a new version will be compatible with this pen soon. I don't know what the price point of this pen might be, but I'm going to guess it is in the range of $120 to $150 US. So what do I like and what do I not like about this new smart pen? Well, looking at the pen itself, if you like the Lamy Safari Rollerball or fountain pen in your hand, this is essentially the same thing. It is a solidly built pen as you'd expect from anything with the Lamy name on it. 
writing with a ballpoint, well, just plain sucks. So if you're a fountain pen user that might use a rollerball now and then in a pinch, but avoid ballpoints at all cost, this won't work for you. There's an added aggravation that with this pen, other than the fact that it makes my already ugly handwriting look like a doctor's prescription. So how does this work? You just feel my pulse? So ah, 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 ah. It rattles when you write. So every time it makes a stroke, it makes a ticking noise. And that just drives me crazy. Getting over my snobbishness about it being a ballpoint. Fielding Wellington's worth. Hello. Livingston Winsterford. Yes. Amelia Bedford Furthington Chesterhill. Good day. And James William Bottomtooth. Well, no. I can see some excellent uses for the smart pen. The most obvious is the ability to take a journal and the pen and write page after page for hours and then having those notes digitized to your computer later for editing sharing or archiving. And that's just what this pen is going to be doing as I will be giving it to Wynn. You see, Wynn is a writer. Wynn is analog. She likes to write with a piece of paper and a pencil. She can be creative with a pen and a piece of paper. The computer just doesn't inspire her. The one thing that is time consuming for her is retyping her handwritten notes after a writing session or a meeting. With this smart pen, all she will have to do is a little bit of editing here and there. And that's one of the best features of this pen. The translation feature is remarkably accurate. Sure, it translates some of my funky writing and printing incorrectly, but I've been told by some viewers that they can't read my writing sample quotes either. The fact that this smart pen can translate about 90% of my chicken scratching, I think is amazing. Plus, it's very easy to adapt. Once you recognize that Neo Studio has difficulty recognizing your funky T's, I just change them into standard T's. So my the becomes like that rather than like that. So once you recognize that, you can easily adjust your writing to adapt that letter, word, or phrase. I'm very impressed with the translation. The features that allow you to save the page as a PNG an SVG or a PDF file are also very convenient. You can also save the page as a URL or as an animation. As an animation, you can replay the actual writing of the page in three different speeds, as either an MP4 video file or an animated GIF file. Think of the possibilities for animation and for creating moving artwork. Walt Disney started by flipping pages in a notebook. This allows you to do all the flipping on one page after editing the animation for color and line thickness. And that's another nice feature of the Neo Studio where you can dress up your written page with color after the fact. You can also write on your device directly uh, with a stylus and add lines or writing to the digital page like most other digital note-taking and drawing apps. I expect artists will love the versatility of this smart pen as you get to feel the real feeling of pen on paper. And artists can easily export their drawings for further editing on their computers using Photoshop or Illustrator or digital painting programs like Krita or Corel. I would hope Neo Smart Pen will update their excellent online teaching tool, PaperTube, to include this Lamy Neo Smart Pen as compatible. It makes no sense for it not to be compatible. I was going to criticize this pen for not being compatible with Windows 10, but just this morning, my Neo Studio had an update that includes the new connectivity with the PC. I like the Lamy A5 notebook as well. It has a premium feel to it and is fountain pen ink friendly. The ENCODE paper can be purchased at reasonable prices online, but the ENCODE planners are sold out. 
So we'll have to wait for the lucrative gift giving season to get the 2022 editions. I would have really liked to have tried out the digital calendar integration with the smart pen. I think that would be another great feature that I know Wynn would appreciate. Having a journal and a day planner that allows you to be analog and save to digital can be very convenient for many people. For me personally, I've been living digitally for so long that I don't need a device like this. My analog writing is for pleasure and doesn't need to be digitized, especially when it looks as awful as it does when it's written with a ballpoint. I don't expect there will be a digital fountain pen anytime soon. So let me know in the comments what you think about digital writing, whether it is smart pens or a computer or a tablet with a stylus. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And don't forget, you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month to guarantee I will answer your comments in the comment section and you get cool emojis and badges too. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.